Hello, and welcome to this week's Halloween Wednesday in the Woods. This week, we're going to be bringing back an old friend, cinnamon, because we'll be talking about a mnemonic we use to help us remember the data science workflow. It goes a little bit like this. Cinephim is mm 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 p p p. Very simple. You'll see in a moment. So, cinnamon, right? Well, we have to do this because this shows you how old I am. Um, it's a good way to start the day. Anyway, so cinephim. Mm 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 p p p. What does it have to do with a data science workflow? Well, you see, CINA is short for C-N-A, where the C stands for collect, the N stands for normalize, and the A stands for augment. In this context, we're talking about collecting the information not just from something like a data subject, but also like an internal system. A number of different topics we'll come back to there later. The second topic is normalization. So when you hear things like data warehouses, data lakes, uh, data platforms, this is the stage at which representations of information are hopefully normalized into similar shapes or standards or formats. And then the third piece of CINA, the A, has to do with augmenting or generating synthetic data. So in many contexts, we might have less data than we want, or there may be issues with the training data that we have, and so to the extent that we're aware of these issues or we know we need a larger sample, we augment our data set. CINA, C-N-A. Next, we have FM, F-F-M. So the F and the F both remind us of feature. The first F stands for feature engineering, where we take the information as it's stored in our original data and we try to engineer or um, combine or create derivative um, aspects of that information. Could be something as simple as adding two numbers together, dividing one number by another, or could be something much more complex having to do with um, external statistical distributions or other kinds of transforms. The second F in FM stands for feature selection. In some cases, this may be captured in the models that we choose down the line, but in many contexts, we actively, as humans, or through some choice of feature selection method, reduce the number of variables that might be passed down the line into our model. Sometimes feature selection has to do with, let's say, removal of bias or um, statistical properties that we know we don't want. In other cases, it's performed simply by something like an algorithm that takes mutual information between variables and some other target of interest and helps us weed out things that don't appear to contribute. So that's the second F. The third F in FM, stand, or the third letter, M, in FM stands for model selection. At this point, we choose one or more types of models that we'd like to use. This could be, in the old days, something like a decision tree or a support vector machine or a random forest. And today, this could have to do with selecting an architecture for a neural network, as more and more modeling activities have to do with deep learning. That gets us through CINAFM, right? C-N-A-F-F-M. About the first half of the workflow. Important, but what's to come is where the actual usage occurs, right? So we've selected a model. We have some features, but we need to train the model. So the next M, 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 is focused entirely on models. First, we train a model, which means, in, in, depending on the model type, we have to pick something like a loss or penalty or some other strategy or means of taking some training data and our model that we've selected, so some kind of parameter set, and fitting the training data to the model. Right? This is where we actually build or fit the model. Um, the next M stands for testing the model. So it's important, obviously, to test the model. Critically, the idea here to remember is that our training data should not be the same as our test data for a variety of reasons. And our test data may be different than the cross-validation strategy that we have that might also have some either kind of data or distribution of data or um, metrics that we use to uh, test. Two M's, M, M. The third M is for model hyperparameter optimization. So in this context, 
Um, we're talking about models where there's a, a clear distinction between the model that we select in a singular sense and the space of potential models that, let's say, share a class. Simple examples would be um, the number of trees in a random forest or something like a, a learning rate parameter in a model. Obviously, many, many model-specific hyperparameters and hyperparameter optimization is very much in the weeds. But uh, again, it's the important step that is often forgotten or missed in, uh, in a data science workflow. So at this point, we've gone through CNA, collect, normalize, augment, FFM, that gets us our CINEFIM, where the FFM stands for feature engineering, feature selection, and model selection. And we just covered MMM, the M in CINEFIM. And the MMM stood for, as a reminder, model training, model testing, and cross-validation, and model hyperparameter optimization. At this point, we should theoretically have a model. And typically, this is where research and development or data science teams cut a line and hand over the model to pa -pa -pa production. So there are three Ps, and you could divide the production life cycle in a number of ways, but we've chosen three Ps in our workflow. And the first P stands for the most obvious, which is implementation. In many, many situations, I would say most historically, the research and development model was never intended for production use, whether for performance reasons, access to data, debugging output, programming languages, a myriad of reasons uh, result in the production usage of a model requiring a porting or re-implementation of the model from research and development. And the second P reminds us that machine learning models, like any software in any controlled organization, ought to have testing in monitoring. So when you're done implementing your model, you're done with the first P, you need to test the model to dock it to confirm that the results you expect from research and development are also the model uh, results in production and monitor. So when your model is running, it's like any other software process. In a controlled organization, it's critical that you monitor the, the uptime, the response time, obviously, but also the quality of the results. Are our probability estimates changing? Is a, a KS test indicating some kind of critical phase change in, the, in our actual production model? And the third P stands for periodic or online retraining. So in many contexts, the model is not just a trained once implemented production model, but it's a model where there's continuous or continual access resulting in online or periodic retraining. And this could be something as simple as users clicking a thumbs up or thumbs down in an application, or it could be something much more complex like going through the entire CINEFM process on a, on a daily basis, including the acquisition of new data sources or materially different um, model hyperparameterization regimes. So the three Ps at the end often a different team, uh, highlighting the, the scope and responsibility change. But nonetheless, we don't build these models for fun. We don't build them for pure research and development perspectives. We build them because we hope or intend them to go into the PPP production stage of our CINEFM mm, p -p -p mnemonic. So I hope you all have a happy Halloween and get out there and have a little fun. and. Um, Please don't do the cinnamon challenge. See you later.